Addison, welcome to Tech Talk. Great. Thanks for having me, Frank. You know, um, so much conversation going on in terms of not so much what's now, but the evolution of what's coming next, and it gets a little bit uh, uh, redundant, I think. Uh, but the bottom line of, uh, of uh, what is happening in terms of connectivity and, and the capacity of computers and artificial intelligence, Internet of Things, progressing us into a whole other, let's say, marketplace of the future. And I guess where I'm headed there is, is that with that kind of empowerment, you know, communities always matter, but the individual now becomes even more important than ever before. I mean, there's a fair amount of conversation about individuals becoming personal brands, for lack of a better description. And I'm not mm-hmm. clear that you're not playing around a little bit about that at Kicker Design, because I think what you guys are doing, I'm guessing it's cutting edge, but, but I mean really cutting edge as it relates to a lot of our audience may not realize there's organizations that are doing the kind of things that you're doing. So. Uh, bear with me on that one, Addison, but go into it a little bit. Tell us the kind of things that you guys are doing at Kicker and what your philosophy is as far as how this is going to be applied to what's coming next. Sure. Well, I mean, I think, I think you hit the nail on the head. I mean, there's, there's lots of new exciting technology. I mean, when you get into IoT devices, connected devices, um, you know, now you have your you know, thermostats or your fridges or all sorts of things kind of connected, feeding you know, valuable information and data. Um, you know, we do a lot of things like that. Um, you know, we have a, a number of kind of different projects where we're doing, you know, connected devices, which you might not have seen yet um, on the market. Um, you know, again, connecting all sorts of different kinds of adi- devices and then being able to take that data and then kind of make intelligent decisions around that data, right? You think of Google, for example. They, you know, do a lot of data mining, um, really understanding kind of your habits and things like that. Um, you know, I think it scares some people, but a lot of people are very excited about, you know, being being able to have kind of more intelligent decisions made about what they want to look at, what they want to purchase. Um, so I think all that kind of factors in. Well, one of the things that I use a lot in our conversations is something that Steve Jobs said, and that was that people don't know what they want until they see it. You know, I think when well, well, isn't it kind of true that when you realize that a lot of the things that that are the biggest, most successful technologies of the moment, we didn't even know we needed. So you know, and so all, and and now disruption, I think, is a good word to describe usually that particular kind of technology. But but that said, you know, go go into those still the idea of I'm 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 guessing. Uh, let's say I'm an entrepreneur. I've got a vision for a particular product. Um, I come to you, and you do what? Um, well, so basically when you, when you come to Kicker, um, the first thing that we do is really kind of sit down with you and get an understanding of what the product is, what you're trying to do, right? So you might be an entrepreneur and uh, you, you've had this great idea, you've kind of been sitting on it for five or six years, but you know what, okay, I'm ready to, ready to make something happen. Um, what we like to do in the very beginning of the process is really, you know, make sure we understand not just the intent, but kind of the problem you're trying to solve. Right, so um, where we go with that is well, then we'll kind of start to build an estimate around that. So say you need, you know, a proof of concept, right? Mm-hmm. Um, you might have an idea and you want us to go into the back and, you know, cut some steel, weld it together, just a really quick test to see if it's going to work, right? You know, see if, the, see if the idea is feasible or not. Mm-hmm. Um, or, you know, you might have an idea that's a little bit more developed, um, maybe you've already done a little bit of kind of customer discovery and you've talked to some friends and family, uh, maybe even some people on the street, you know, getting some feedback on the idea and you're ready to kind of take it to the next level, right? So that, at that stage, we can kind of look at the concept and again say, okay, what do we need to get you from where you are with the concept or prototype you have now to that next stage, whether that's the MVP, that's another proof of concept, or that's kind of a more fully baked manufacturing design. So a, a, a maker space kind of thing? I don't mean certainly for a particular vertical, but for everybody that needs that kind of support? Uh, make, maybe a little bit different than a maker space, because um, what we are kind of at our core is an engineering firm, right? So we have, you know, mechanical engineers, electrical engineers, software engineers, industrial designers, um, and we can kind of take those skill sets and apply it where they need to be applied. So. For example, you might be a mechanical engineer by training and you come in and, you know, you can handle some of the mechanical portion, but maybe you need help building a PCB or doing some, some embedded software. Mm-hmm. Um, so we can kind of tailor, you know, to your specific needs kind of what, uh, what those requirements are. 
Okay, and, and I was oversimplifying it, but I think there's a lot of play right now in terms of trying to figure out. You know what I love is that we, again, talk about this a lot here, Addison, is the fact we don't deal with verticals. We deal with the horizontal technology industry. So on any given day, you know, we may be talking about a particular vertical. Uh, and the one thing that you begin to realize is that everything is the same, only different. And it kind of goes back to what I was saying about the infrastructure and speed and IoT and all of the things that are uh, AI and et cetera, et cetera. It doesn't matter whether you're fintech or health IT. And in this mm -hmm. particular case, even uh, advanced manufacturing and some of the robotics and automation and just uh, on and on and on. But what mm -hmm. is why I say makerspace is sort of like uh, in this evolution of uh, technology and terminology, you know, trying to find words that describe what's next. Certainly, I think we, we both would understand our audience as well what a makerspace was or supposedly is. Yeah. Why I was yeah. using it as an analogy is what's an innovation center, what's a makerspace, what's an incubator, whatever. And I'm not clear that it isn't something like where you're at right now that we'll be looking at in a couple of years as being the mainstay of supporting all of this new innovation that's going to be already coming up. But, you know, what you're doing is uh, uh, supporting and accelerating the ability. And it isn't just an entrepreneur. I'm assuming it's also a small to medium-sized company, maybe even a larger company that wants to outsource some uh, product research. Would that be yeah. okay? Yeah, I think that's very true, and I think your your kind of use of makerspace in that in that instance is is very true. I mean, I guess makerspace, you know, for some people, kind of conjures up like you know some some old equipment sitting in a sitting in a garage, right? Which might be one kind of makerspace, but I think you're absolutely right. Like, as a lot of individuals kind of move towards, you know, wanting to work on their concepts or have, like you said, small businesses or larger businesses that that want to branch out and kind of bring in some some fresh ideas for kind of innovation, right? Almost like an innovation center. Yeah. Um, yeah. See see those. I mean, yeah, that's that's definitely the case. I mean, well, that's that's why I, when I when we first learned about you guys and we started talking about it and looked into what you were doing. I mean, I think you're you're absolutely right in the moment, right in the now. You know, as they're saying and and. Um, and I think it's a case where probably the challenge, and I'm going to drift into this now, is getting to people to understand what you can bring to the table one side and then the other side that there actually is somebody that can help you in a situation like this. Because, I, sure. you know, one of the things, again, that we deal with not only the terminology, but when you're dealing in, in innovation, it's usually a case of the hardest problem is to find people who care and, uh, and, and who know what you're doing because most of the time, it's a new or an edgy situation that, you know, Eastern right. philosophers say it hadn't existed. It's like grabbing water. How do you explain that to someone to help you when you don't really know what it looks like or, or what it's going to take to complete it? And that's the kind of thing it sounds like you guys get into. So I'm, I'm excited and I'm stumbling around and trying to describe what you should be talking about. So go ahead. I'll throw it back at you, Addison. Sure. Well, I think, I think that's exactly what kind of gets us excited, right? I mean, being able to have a very wide array of different resources because, I mean, when, you, when it comes down to it, every project is different, right? Um, and, and it could be vastly different between projects, right? Um, but being able to have kind of a wide array of resources with a lot of really excellent engineering and design talent, um, we can kind of, you know, we can take, you know, this person off, from this project and this person from this project, kind of bring them together and develop kind of a solution that kind of makes sense from a lot of different angles, right? So having kind of a, di a diversity of backgrounds, having, you know, a lot of understanding of, uh, across a broad range of projects means we can kind of pick and pull from all that different varied experience um, across, you know, a huge number of kind of industries and products, which I think that's what we get really excited about is when we can kind of get four or five people in the room and really start to brainstorm and think about all the different ways yeah. we might be able to that's got to be that's got to be exciting. I mean, that's really really sounds interesting. I'd, it would be sort of like buy a ticket to watch that one. You want to see something live streaming? It would probably be one of your brainstorming sessions. Yeah. I think that would be pretty entertaining, educational as well. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, no, the, the brainstorming activities are are a lot of fun. I mean, we we really enjoy those, and that's you know that is a core part of the process. Is is you know sometimes people will come to us uh, and say, oh well, I have I have this this idea for a product. Um, and this is how it's going to work, right? At the very beginning of the process, usually what we like to do is open it up a little bit broader, right? Um, you know, one person or, or three people thinking about an idea, well, if we open it up to ten people thinking about ideas, there's going to be a lot of different ways to approach that problem. Mm -hmm. You know, some of which might work, some of which might not, but elements of all of those could be combined to make a really great solution. 
Well, talk a little bit about uh, two aspects, I guess, of the same thing. One is uh, how has the business been doing? Has you know uh, uh, the process that you have in play for growing your own business, and how is uh, how is that working for you? And then maybe go into actually some example projects that you've worked on, so that again our listeners can get a better grasp on what it is exactly you're providing. Sure. Yeah. So um, I mean, the the business is going very well. Um, I think we have a we have a lot of uh, a lot of fun projects right now. Um, a lot of customers that are that were really excited and, and having a lot of fun working on their projects. Um, I mean, as as a as an array of projects they work on, like I said, it's pretty broad. Um, we could be working on anything from you know a little plastic injection molded uh, cosmetics case, right? Mm-hmm. Maybe there's a new kind of we had a customer with a new cosmetics design and they did case for that, um, you know, to package that in kind of a unique way. So thinking about how do we how do we make it low profile, slim, you know, feel really good when you open and close it? You know, so some of those things which may seem mundane but are actually kind of interesting challenges. Um, you know, all the way to, um, you know, industrial automated equipment. So we've done a, a fair number of kind of benchtop, um, you know, automated uh, pieces of equipment where there might have been an application where a customer, um, you know, they had a, a unique a, a unique product and they needed a unique way to put down, you know, a layer of glue in a specific pattern, mm-hmm. right? So, um, you know, automating something like that, you know, they were doing it by hand, being able to increase their throughput by making kind of some custom equipment there. Um, and then on the other side of things, um, you know, medical devices, we do a lot of those as well. So uh, recently we've been working on a, a pretty neat um, custom surgical x-ray design. So that's, uh, that's a lot of fun because we kind of get to, get to play around with, uh, with x-rays in a lead cabinet, of course, so, uh, so it's all safe. But, uh, um, you know, some unique aspects of that design, both in terms of electronics and software and in terms of kind of the mechanical system, um, since it's a handheld device. When, when you're talking about design, obviously one side of it, and it would be the engineering and, like you're saying, the efficiency or the uniqueness of the creative uh, and the way the product is presented and packaged. Um, but that's a reflection also of marketing and positioning. When you do proof of concept, is it all, quote, unquote, the design and the, and the construction, if you will, what's the terminology, but the actual creation of the prototype and how much of that is like situation analysis and getting involved in marketing and positioning and that kind of thing. Is that something that a client comes to you with? Do you even care about that and only deal with the engineering? How does the actual proof of concept as it relates to not just the engineering aspect but the marketability, is that something you drift into? It? I guess you would have to inadvertently. Yeah, I mean, I think I think one, it kind of depends on on that stage of the project, right? So proof of concept, um, we might not be looking at you know any kind of marketability concerns at mm, all, right? Mm. At that stage, we might say, okay, this is a unique process or a unique problem. Um, this is a potential solution. Does it work at all, right? Um, and that's kind of more from the engineering side. Now, when we get into kind of the industrial design side and thinking through the use cases, we certainly need to think a lot about. Um, again, what is the problem and how does the solution relate to the end user, the customer, whoever is going to be interacting with this, this device or software, right? So there's a lot of thought that goes into thinking about the customer, the use case, right? How do we make sure that all that matches up so at the end, again, we have a good product? I'm trying. I'm thinking that you know, at some point, you know, artificial intelligence. You talk about a disruption. I don't think you know. You mentioned data before, and I think it's gotten to the point where the acceleration of, you know, it started off as what was a structured and unstructured, and we went through this whole terminology up to uh, pervasive and prescriptive, and of course now I think it's ubiquitous. I mean, the speed of connection is so vast, and the number of contexts so much that it profiles you. And uh, just data is an understatement in terms of what they'll ultimately know and understand about you. And I guess where I'm headed is is that there's few areas that will be, I think, strongholds of uh, uh, of uh, business opportunity that are not going to necessarily be impact in, in a negative way with this high speed evolution into innovation. And where I'm headed is is that you know when they, everybody talks about jobs, everybody talks about fifty uh, percent of the titles won't be here that were here before. What is really going to happen? I mean, that's both a question and a statement. What is really going to happen? Probably the uh, branding of an individual's own creativity and having the empowerment of what you present allows, obviously, idea to go to reality. And uh, that's the part. When I talk about, say, proof of concept as it relates even getting involved in the marketing functionality of it, it's going to be probably some hybriding of what you guys are doing with other people who realize that by connecting with this part of it, 
uh, there's obviously a, a huge advantage to a, uh, getting the particular product off the ground and being successful with that product. And a lot of exciting things that you're playing around with, Addison, really are. Yeah, no, I, I definitely agree. I mean, I think, you know, if, if you look at kind of the whole product life cycle, right, I mean, we, we exist at a number of kind of points along that product life cycle, right, kind of from the very beginning all the way through to something where something's on a shelf, right? And, and there's there's a lot of interface back and forth between some of those kind of marketing branding concerns and what we do. And there has to be right. Um, Cause they're, they're very intimately, intimately linked. Did I read that you were in, at Apple or Microsoft? I couldn't remember. It was one yeah, of the, Apple. Apple. Yeah, I, well then Apple. certainly you had to know the, the Steve jobs period era and when he was in and out and what he did as far as product design was concerned and the impact that he had oh. and, and the, what happened when he left and the impact that, other infamous designers, I can't remember the name of the individual that replaced him, but they weren't so good. And there was, you know, I remember seeing one uh, vintage computer one day, and the comment was made that the only reason why you knew it wasn't a Steve Jobs design was because the insert uh, of where the hard drive would go in was white and the rest of it was black, and you just knew that wouldn't be a Steve Jobs kind of a thing. You know what I mean? So I, yeah. I'm, uh, I'm guessing that you've got a, a, a lot of real-world experience through a process of incredible revolution that was going on while you were in that particular business and other companies, as I know your resume is pretty impressive. But now implementing it the way you do, not going to beat it on it too much because I think it's something that I'm, I'm, I'm really, really – uh, uh, excited for you guys. I know there's a, a fair amount of buzz, but it's growing in momentum. More people are talking about what you guys are playing around with. Uh, I just think that uh, we're maybe just having an opportunity to talk to the next really, really big thing. I know you probably want that to happen, Addison. I think we see a lot of it from an objective standpoint. Some of it we wish them well. Others we wish we bought stock. I think you're going to sure. be one of the second ones. I really do. But in any case, uh, thank you uh, so much uh, for taking a few minutes uh, out of your schedule to join us today on Tech Talk. I really want to take a moment also to invite you back because I think what you're going to do is going to evolve. And the next time we talk in a several weeks say, from now, I think you'll both be surprised what you're getting into in one way or another. But in, Absolutely. That, but in, in any case, thank you so much for taking time out of what I know is going to be exciting but also a pretty busy schedule. Yeah, well, thanks. I appreciate it. And uh, certainly if, if anybody wants to get in contact with us, you can uh, go to our website at www.kickerdesign.com.